I do apologize, YouTube. I had family matters to attend to for the past week, and I've been off YouTube. Family becomes, uh, or become, comes before YouTube, so you guys get it, right? But I'm back. My commitment, a video a day. I'm going to try to put out a couple today to make up for lost time. So, but yeah, man, it's killing me. I was like ready to get back on here. All right, but look, 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 today, 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 we're going to talk about the middleweight division. One, six, and a zero, okay? Middleweight division, glamour division, right? We always talk about the welterweight, welterweight division being the glamour weight division. You know, my order is this, one, two, three, middleweight, welterweight, and heavyweight. Those are my three favorites. And even getting into, you know, lightweight, flyweight, all that, but those are my top three. But anyway, today, the middleweight division, Daniel Jacobs, Sergey uh, Darvin Checo, Darvian Checo, however you want to pronounce it, okay? I'm Texas, I'm from Texas, so I'm going to say Darvan Checo, okay? That's how I pronounce it, all right? So, now, okay, look, uh, I'll talk about the actual Jacobs, Ko or not Kovalev, Sergey Kovalev, <laughs> Sergey Darvin Chico fight in a minute. But first, I want to talk about the post fight interview. Okay, sorry guys, I got heartburn. Okay, Daniel Jacobs now holding the IBF title after going 12, yes, I said 12 round in a close split decision two judges had it for uh jacobs and another judge had it for darwin checo wow okay and and you know by the way i thought that was going to be the last hbo boxing broadcast but apparently not apparently they have another fight Bival and uh or Bival and Pascal, yeah, right, Pascal, I think coming up in November, you know, they were uh, uh, advertising on, on HBO during that fight, and I was like, oh, wow, okay, but anyway, Jacobs basically told Max Kellerman, Triple G is no longer a champion, burn, 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 okay, I want Canelo, and then I will bless Gennady Golovkin with my presence, I'll, I will give him a rematch, you know, if I feel like it, basically, is what he's saying, and right now, I'm not really interested in that fight, you know, wow, Look, let me put it this way. Could you imagine what the biased media would say if Gennady Golovkin Triple G struggled with Darvin Checo? Right? Could you imagine? Could you imagine? You know, I watched all the, their reaction videos and everything, and they're talking about, oh, you know, it was a great fight, brilliant boxing, you know, it was a tough fight. Now, all of a sudden, you know... Darvin Checo, like, like, well, not all of a sudden, you know, they claim Gennady Golovkin ducked him because he's like this, you know, feared fighter, this unknown underdog, this is, you know, this wild card that uh, just hasn't, you know, really give, been given his due credit, you know, 11 fights, you know, but a good, good amateur background. But here's the thing. Here's the thing, people. Golovkin needs to get his respect back from the middleweight division. R-E-S-P-E-K, respect. He needs to get that back from the middleweight division. I mean, he's people talking about him like he's chopped liver, you know, seriously. So, I mean, you got guys looking at him like, like, like he's nothing, okay? These guys are talking about Gennady Golovkin like he's some kind of easy win, all right? Uh, and, and, and by the way, by the way, remember when Daniel Jacobs got on social media after the original Gennady Golovkin Canelo Alvarez fight? Now, what did he do on social media? Let's fast forward. He's like, here's his face. This, that was his immediate reaction, you know, talking about how Golovkin got robbed. You know, he really beat Canelo. I want a rematch with Golovkin. Even his daughter in this particular video is saying, wow, dad, you know, Triple G got robbed and that was a rob. You know, they're all talking about how it was a robbery, right? You know, so, uh, you know, and now, now, like I said, he's going around parading around. I'm going to read these tweets to you here in a minute. Parading around, you know, talking about Canelo's the champion, Golovkin's nothing. You know, it, it's just, man, the pandering in boxing is, is something else, right? But anyway, uh, the, the jacobs darvin Checo fight, um, it was close, okay, really close. And keep in mind, this is the guy, like I said, that Gennady Golovkin apparently ducked in order to fight Von Ez Marty Rosen. And, I mean, it was a close fight. I, I thought he did really good if he didn't gas out. One knockdown, but, uh, you know, I, I, at any point, I felt like Jacobs could have been or, or should have been, may have been, could have been knocked out or, or at least down, you know, the, like the Latin snake Mora did at any time, okay? Uh, Sergey only 11 professional fights, but, a, you know, really deep amateur background. Kind of reminds me of the Luis Ortiz of the middleweight division. Oh, side note, got a Deontay Wilder Tyson Fury video, video coming out. Uh, it's a good one, so you guys want to check it out. And a Gennady Golovkin update. But anyway, these two guy they sparred like what 300 rounds together you know trained by uh, the same coach you know that kind of thing so you know they claim they're not really friends but uh 
you know, they're, they're very familiar with each other. We'll put it that way. They're very, very familiar with each other. So, you know, and if Darbincheco wasn't so green and didn't gas out in the third damn round, you know, I think he, he probably could have beat, beat uh, Jacobs. And you even have, like, all the elite media, you know, that is their assessment of the fight. That is their analysis. That is their reaction that, you know, that particular Jacobs, there's no way he could beat Canelo. There's no way he could beat Gol even Golovkin in a rematch, you know, even if Golovkin is slipping, you know. So uh, it wasn't a good showing for him. Um, and I, I was, like, watching Eddie Hearns in the audience, like, during the fight, and you could just see the look on his face. <laughs> you know what I mean? You could just see the look on his face. It was it was like a mixture of excitement and oh shitness and what's about to happen, to, you know, like that kind of thing. But, uh, you know, yeah, Darwin Chuckle breathing incredibly heavy third, fourth round. You know, he just didn't have it in him to do what he needed to do, you know, physically, condition, you know, and condition wise. You know, his car, look, boxing is a cardio first sport. You know, I also remember uh, Roy Jones saying something like, you know, he's never been past like the seventh round. So I think Jacobs was trying to get him into the deep water so he could basically drown him. You know, so that's what I think, you know. And he did just that. Now, let me read these tweets real quick. Uh, where am I? Yeah, right here. From Oscar De La Hoya. I'm freaking tired of these so-called PBC fighters cherry-picking all the time and not thinking of their legacy, rather uh, thinking of a quick buck. Now, this guy down here, I don't even know who this is, says, LOL, how many years have you and Canelo ducked the Charlos? Okay, so, you know, there we go. Now, Charlo says, uh, this is uh, Jermel Charlo, <clears throat> you never really wanted to put a Charlo in with, with your cash cow. Instead, you guys fought Kirkland in Houston, which, by the way, I was ringside for that fight. It was pretty awesome. Uh, at Oscar De La Hoya, I'm freaking tired of these so-called PBC fires cherry-picking. And here's the thing. Here's the thing. I mean, do you give Oscar De La Hoya credit? Do you give him credit? Because, you know, he did put Canelo in there twice, you know, back-to-back -back with Gennady Golovkin right so i mean they're kind of in this position right now where you can't really smack talk them because you know they took on the most feared middleweight in, arguably in boxing history right the knockout artist right the monster gennady Golovkin. They, 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 they took on his killer twice you know back to back right i mean not necessarily there was a drug test you know the whole uh ped scandal but you know can you really can you can you really say that can you really say they're cherry picking now Post Gennady Golovkin, I would say yes. I mean, th this whole 168 move for Canelo fighting a uh, Rocky Fielding or whatever the hell his name. I don't even know the dude's name. Whatever the hell it is, Fielding, I think. What is that? I mean, what the hell is that? I mean, what better way to duck the middleweight division than to move up? I mean, I say this all the time on the channel. I preach to you guys about it, you know, all the time. If you want to duck these guys, just move up because you don't look like a coward moving up. You look like a coward ducking, moving down, catch weights, things like that. And they've learned that. Like that whole 155 Canelo, Canelo catch weight, they've learned you know basically fighting blown up welterweights they've learned they can no longer do that so now what are they doing instead but what are they going to do are they going to have this big campaign at super middleweight no they're not because there's only so many fieldings that canelo can fight you know especially especially in a title fight so it, you know i mean what are they going to do what is he going to defend it i doubt it i mean <laughs> you know i mean and I, I actually i made a video talking about if he did continue you know who would he who would he face to defend you know the the new belt at 168 so and i, I made a whole list about that you know smith i talked about all of them so go watch that video you know uh, i think it was in the top five golovkin opponents something like that now and while i was about to reveal my next video i'm gonna like i said i got i have an update coming on gennady golovkin i'm not going to talk a whole lot about it right now but I just want to kind of close with, uh, you know, what I think should happen in the middleweight division. Okay, right now, you got Canelo holding two belts, okay? And you got Demetrius Andre holding another. And uh, now Daniel Jacobs has the IBF, you know? So what I think should happen, I mean, I, for, first, I want to see Charlo tested at, at this elite level. Now, is Jacobs elite? I don't think so. I don't. I mean, I think... Yeah, I, I just simply don't. I mean, you look at his record, you look at his resume, like I said, the Sergey Mora fight, and there's, there's a bunch of them. I've broken it down before. You know, and losing to Gennady Golovkin, you know, and, and, and then, you know, fighting this guy with 11 professional fights that he knew so well. I mean, look, he sparred the dude 300 times. I mean, how much more comfortable can you be with a guy? So he went in there and won the IBF title against the guy that he had been in the ring with hundreds and hundreds of hours and hundreds and hundreds of rounds. I mean, 300, that's crazy. So, I mean, it's, you know, they always talk about how fighters that have a, a rematch, a rubber match, a trilogy, whatever, how they're so familiar 
you're uncomfortable. Well, what about a guy that, you know, you've got 300 rounds with, <laughs> you know, or th what, however many. It, it's like 300 or whatever. It's just in an insane amount of number, right? So, you know, to me, that was like the easiest path anyone could ever possibly have to a middleweight title, to, you know, for the IBF, right? A guy with 11 fights that you know, you know, through and through like the back of your hand. So what's going to happen when Jacob's in there with the Charlo, you know, or even a Demetrius Andre, a Billy Joe Saunders? That's what I want to see. So next, what I, would I, I think Golovkin I'd like to see Golovkin fight Charlo and I'd like to see Jacobs fight like Billy Joe Saunders or even Demetrius Andre something like that so I think these guys need to step up not step down they don't need to keep it even I want to see I, it's time for these all these guys to step up and fight each other and and not that they really haven't but you know it, like I said you got Canelo run into a new division um, you know this guy can't fight this guy because he's not signed with that guy I just want to see these guys fight each other so that would be my pick if I had a dream match um, like I said it would probably be either Either Golovkin Canelo versus Charlo, and then I'd want to see like like a Billy Joe Saunders Jacobs, you know, because I think they're they're more on that you know A minus B plus level, okay, where I put Canelo, Golovkin, and Charlo at that A minus A plus. I put I put Jacobs at that B minus B plus level, along with Billy Joe Saunders, because I think you know he can't commit to the sport. You know, he's up and down all over the place. He's good in one fight, terrible in the next. He looks great in David Lemieux. Then he looks like a, a B level amateur in another fight. So, you know, I put him in that B minus B plus category. So, anyway, what do you guys want to see next? What do you think about the, the, the survey, Darvin Checo uh, Jacobs fight? You know, what's your opinion on it? And uh, what do you think should happen in the middleweight division?